This is the TI-89 Titanium, a 20-year-old graphing calculator. But the question today is, can it be overclocked? The TI-89 has a Motorola 68K processor, which was originally released in 1979 and has been used in a load of products. On paper, it's somewhere between a Nintendo DS and a Game Boy Color, but that's only on paper. So how do we bench a calculator? Well, first of all, we'll write some assembly code as explained here. Then we'll convert this assembly code into machine code and then we'll input that directly into the TI-89 in a hexadecimal format. And I have to speed this part up a bit simply because the code is incredibly long. Alright, now we're running the bench, and there's going to be a timer on the left side of the screen that will tell us how long it took. And basically what this is doing is just running that assembly code that moves a single piece of data 10 million times. Alright, so the bench took 1 minute 22 seconds, which is 82 seconds. And if we take the reciprocal of 82, we get this value multiplied by 1000 is 12.2. Therefore, the real speed is 12.2 megahertz. Now that we have a number value to compare, let's also play a few Game Boy games to have some real world references. And the first game we have is Harvest Moon, which came out in 1998. So we see an FPS counter on the left here. It's saying 7 FPS right now, between 6 and 7 FPS it seems. So overall gameplay, there's a little bit of delay and it's a little bit clunky, but definitely playable, I would say. Let's pick this dog up. And yeah, so outside, pretty much around 6 to 7 FPS. A little bit laggy, but I wouldn't say completely unplayable. Alright, so that's Harvest Moon. The next game that we have is Metroid 2 Return of Samus, which came out in 1991. Now this game is pretty old, so... The FPS that we're getting is a lot better, it seems, around 11, 12. And sometimes, I think I saw even like a, like a 14 and stuff like that, 14, 15. So overall, the FPS on this game is a lot better. It's still a little bit laggy, but definitely a lot more playable than Harvest Moon. And let's see if we can shoot this thing up there. Okay, so it's working. And yeah, the game is actually quite playable, and I don't think that... Uh, I mean, it would be nice if we could get a little bit of improvement after the overclock, if it does work. But overall, it's still already playable, so it's not too bad. Alright, the next game that we have is Mortal Kombat, which came out in 1993. This is a port for the Game Boy, and I think it's a pretty obscure game, actually, because the one that came out for the Game Boy Color later is a lot more popular. Alright, so let's see our performance on this game. Alright, so first of all, what I'm noticing is the input delay is like huge, probably a whole second input delay. And then the actual um, gameplay is really bad, about 7 FPS, you know, 6-7 FPS. But it, it actually feels a lot worse than that because of the input delay. So this game, um, definitely not playable, definitely wouldn't be working. <laughs> yeah, we got a kick off on him. Alright, so that was Mortal Kombat for the Game Boy. Uh, definitely not a playable game on this device. Alright, so the next game we have is Pokemon Red, which is released in 1998. And obviously everybody loves this game, everybody loves the Pokemon series. And it's actually not too bad. Um, there's a little bit of delay in terms of the movement. I can still definitely walk around. Okay, so the battle loading animation is a little bit slow. Okay, there's pretty clear delay um, as they're entering the battle animations right now. So let's see how slow the um, bringing out Charmander is going to be. Yeah, so the FPS is really, really sporadic. It's just completely all over the place. Okay, so the animation for Charmander coming out is pretty slow. It's it's actually like not unplayable, I would say. It's still definitely really decent for a calculator. But at the same time, I do think that once we overclock this thing, it could be a lot better. And it looks like this battle is going to be pretty close. So the animation for when he tackles, you know, like the screen shaking, that's actually pretty smooth. So yeah, it looks like we're going to win this battle. 
and Charmander grew to level 6. So that's great. Alright, so walking around we're getting like a 14-15 FPS, sometimes 17 even, and it's pretty smooth, pretty good. I would say definitely playable. Alright, so let's quit out of that and get started. So turn that TI-89 around, and then what we're going to need is to remove the back plate or the back thing. And then let's actually take out a screwdriver. So what we're going to need today is the T6 screw, which is a really small torque screw. And then I have this new automatic screwdriver that I just got yesterday. And we're going to be using that on the calculator. All right, so there are six small T6 Torx screws on the calculator, which we'll have to take out all of them. And then there's another smaller uh, part that, well, not smaller, but there's another Phillips head screw that you're gonna have to remove. All right, guys, so this is what the motherboard looks like. Obviously, you can see I've removed the front and that's the Motorola 68K, the CPU that we need. And this is the part that we're gonna be modifying in order to get it to overclock. All right, and what we'll need today is a pencil, just a regular pencil. And the reason why we're gonna be using a pencil is because pencils contain graphite and graphite is a conductor. And we'll just take the pencil and we'll rub it across that little resistor. And this is going to stop the, uh, basically the resistor is undervolting the CPU and making it run at a lower clock rate. And close up, that's what it looks like. So we got it pretty good on there. And now we'll just put the back plate back on and snap everything back into place. Make sure that it snaps on firmly so that it's covered completely. All right, and now all we have to do is screw everything back into place. Put the Phillips head screw back into place. This actually covers the backup battery. All right, so the moment of truth, guys. We're gonna enter the benchmark code again and test how long it takes. All right. So you can see on the left here, the timer. And we're just gonna be seeing if we see any improvement after overclocking it. Well, hopefully we overclocked it successfully. All right, so it's a lot faster. And we're going to do the same calculations as before for this value. And it'll show that the clock speed we have now is actually 15.87 megahertz. So it's a lot faster than before. And we're going to do our real world tests now, starting off with Harvest Moon. All right, so we'll just enter our name here. I don't think we had this in the original test, but okay. So we're getting into the gameplay. Uh, everything just seems to be around the same. I don't see any improvement on this game. Six to seven FPS was where we were getting in the original test that we had. We can still pick up the dog. Okay, let's go outside. Takes a little bit to load the outdoors portion. Alright, so yeah, I don't see any significant improvement on this game. Everything seems to be pretty much the same. Alright, so it's fairly surprising that there isn't a significant improvement in the FPS of this game since the clock speed did actually go up quite a lot. Alright, the next game that we have is Metroid 2 Return of Samus. This game was already running pretty smoothly on the first test. So what I'm expecting here is that it'll just play a little bit better. All right, so 11 FPS here. Um, I think that it's playing pretty much exactly the same. I don't really see any huge difference here. Yeah, so it might be a little bit smoother, but I don't see really any difference. I think that for this game and Harvest Moon, there probably wouldn't be any real difference. But yeah, this game is already really smooth, so I don't think the overclocking was really even necessary for this one. What I'm really interested is if uh, Mortal Kombat and Pokemon see any improvements. So we're going to go to those ones. Okay, Mortal Kombat. So this game, as you remember, was incredibly laggy. It was in like completely unplayable. The delay was terrible. Over one second, I would say. Alright, so... The gameplay now is actually not too bad. I mean, it's still like massively delayed. You know, like the FPS where we're getting like 7, 8 is what we were getting before, but the animations are a little bit smoother. Like, um, I'll try to do a comparison here to show you. 
But yeah, basically this gameplay is like still completely unplayable just because we're getting like 7-8 FPS and there's still delay, but a little bit better than before. Definite improvement. All right, now we have Pokemon Red. And this game has like, there's a massive improvement in this one, honestly. Because like I'm getting 18 FPS a lot of the time and then everything is like a lot like faster. I don't know. It just like um, feels like the entire game is like sped up compared to before and everything is just a lot smoother. So even the text is like going by a lot smoother and then all right. So this battle animation is like so much faster than before. And even this part, which was extremely laggy before is a lot faster. And let's see how long it takes for me to bring out Charmander. Right. Yeah, so definitely faster than before. I would say up to like 20 to 30% faster, honestly. And I, would, I wouldn't actually be mad about uh, finishing the game in this state. Oh wait, okay, so I don't know if this screen was supposed to flash like that on his tail whip, but... Yeah, I would still say the game is really playable like this, honestly. And I might actually do a video where I finish uh, Pokemon Red on the TI-89 Titanium. And I'm actually really happy about this overclock because it's finally allowing me to play this game on my calculator without having to take a break for a few hours after every small portion just because I'm tearing my hair out at like how slow the game is and how laggy the game is. And yeah, around 18 frames per second while walking. Um, everything is really smooth. I wouldn't say it's actually that much worse than the original game. The game is definitely playable. Um, it's a, definitely not as good as the as playing on the original console just because, you know, the screen isn't that great. You have to use the multiply and divide symbol to move the screen up and down. But I would still say, you know, like over like 20 FPS a lot of the time when we're having the battles and stuff like that, still very, very playable. So I would actually recommend this uh, pencil overclock on the TI-89 if any of you are interested in playing Pokemon Red on your calculator. And I actually made a video on installing Pokemon Red on your TI-89 if any of you are interested. Uh, I think you will need a TI-89 Titanium, but I'm not 100% sure. I can give more comprehensive instructions in a later video if any of you are confused. And that was today's video on overclocking the TI-89 Titanium. Definitely a very interesting project and something that you might be interested in doing yourself. So as always, like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel for more.